In the town of Mercer, Ohio, two friends with very different personalities try to make the best out of their situations. Then, they find something in the woods that changes their lives forever. One day, everything is going well and nothing is unusual as Jacob sits at his study table, sketching a two-legged robot he once saw in the woods. Moments later, he freshens up for school, also trying to pinch his pimple in front of the mirror. Then, Jacob heads to school with his younger brother, Cole. Cole suddenly stops walking as he tries to tie his shoelace, but the shoelace gets torn as he pulls it. So, Jacob unties his shoelace, then he approaches his younger brother and makes him use it instead. In the classroom, Jacob sits with Danny, his best friend. They are having their exam, and Jacob slowly moves his paper toward Danny so the latter can copy his answers. Afterward, the two friends go to a gym to lift weights. Jacob lies on a training bench, and as he struggles to push the barbell up, he asks Danny for a little assistance with the bar. After putting it back, he gets up as it is now Danny's turn, and Jacob only watches as his friend adds more weight plates to the bar. Moments later, they go to a park where their peers are, and Jacob awkwardly sits alone while Danny hangs out with a girl named Lauren. Then, Jacob suddenly spots May, the girl he likes, standing across from him. He stares at her and tries waving his hand, but he only gets ignored. That evening, the two friends jam inside Danny's house until Danny inquires if Jacob's going to ask May out. When Jacob says maybe, Danny asks why, and the other guy explains how the two of them are different, pertaining to how he can't easily muster the courage to talk to other people. Jacob also learns that Danny is not interested in love and is only focused on working at the loop, especially since he is already getting recruitment calls from the institution. At home, during dinner, George, Jacob's father, talks about Jacob's upcoming graduation and work at the Loop. Loretta, Jacob's mother, also joins the conversation by asking what area Jacob is planning to pursue. Jacob isn't sure yet, but he mentions he likes to draw. However, his father only regards drawing as a hobby, and Loretta points out that Jacob still has time to think about what he wants. After dinner, Jacob and Cole go to their room, and both of them are busy sketching. Cole makes Jacob look at his work, and the latter compliments his younger brother for getting better at the craft. Then, Cole puts his sketchbook and pencil on the table to brush his teeth while Jacob remains at his table and finishes his sketch of May. The next day, Danny is painting a barn when Jacob comes to visit him. Danny then takes a break and gets down from the ladder to smoke with Jacob. Moments later, the two friends find themselves in the middle of the woods, talking and doing random things like mimicking the sound of birds, fencing using twigs, and others. They also walk past a two-legged robot, but they soon discover a circular container, which they think is a sea mine. Danny urges Jacob to check what's inside, and after they find out that it is hollow, he convinces his friend once again to climb in. Finally convinced, Jacob goes inside the sea mine, but soon after, Danny wakes up on the ground beside the circular container. Oddly, he calls for Danny as Jacob emerges from the container, talking as if he is Danny. The two stare at each other, and that's when they realize that they've transposed bodies. While Danny seems to like the idea of them switching bodies, Jacob starts to panic and shouts for help. Danny tries to calm Jacob down until he decides to go inside the sea mine again to see what will happen. It isn't long before Danny wakes up in his original body, while Jacob also returns to his. With the sea mine not going anywhere else, the two friends eventually agree to try switching bodies for a day. So, Jacob climbs inside the sea mine once more, and they switch bodies again. Afterward, the two race back to town, and Jacob, who is currently in Danny's athletic body, beats Danny, who is in Jacob's frail body. As they stand in front of a random store, they unexpectedly run into Russ Willard, Jacob's grandfather and the founder of The Loop. Despite being unprepared for the encounter, the two boys successfully pretend that nothing unusual is happening. Finally, the two friends arrive at Jacob's house, then Jacob orients Danny about his room, Cole, and his parents. He also reminds Danny not to get him in trouble and not to check his stuff. Meanwhile, Danny just tells Jacob to continue painting the barn, behave well, go to his house to sleep, and ignore his sister. Then, as they part ways, they say they'll see each other the next day. Jacob, in Danny's body, goes to the barn to continue painting it when Lauren arrives. Lauren takes him inside the barn, and with no one else inside, they end up kissing. Eventually, Jacob goes to Danny's house where he finds his friend's parents downstairs. Before Jacob goes upstairs, Kate, Danny's mother, asks how his day went, and Jacob only gives a short response. As Jacob takes a shower, he can't help but admire his newly possessed body. But he gets interrupted when Danny's little sister goes inside the room, and as instructed, Jacob only shoos her away. While Jacob eats dinner in the kitchen, Kate talks to him since she thinks he's Danny and says he might not be able to work at the Loop in the fall because of his grades. She also adds that he should consider working for his Uncle Henry at the quarry. 
After the quick meal, Jacob goes back to Danny's room, and as he prepares to go to bed, he sees a tarantula under Danny's sheets. Left with no choice, he puts it back in the terrarium using Danny's notebooks, until he hears Danny's parents arguing over his friend's future career and work options. That night, Danny, in Jacob's body, struggles to sleep. So he stands by the window and while he looks outside, he sees another Jacob on the lawn. The next morning, Jacob is awakened by Ed, Danny's father. On the way to school, Jacob and Ed remain silent while listening to the morning news on the car's radio. Moments later, they pass by Danny and Cole as they head to school, and before Jacob gets out of the car, Ed gives him a hug. Later that day, the two friends meet and talk about their first night of switching bodies. After learning that they both had uneventful nights, Jacob notices that Danny has popped the pimple on his face. Danny then shares that he had a weird dream with two Jacobs, adding that one of them is him while the other is the real Jacob. They also talk about switching bodies but decide to do it the next day. After that, Jacob talks about Danny's mother asking him to work at the quarry and confronts Danny for lying about getting calls from the loop. His friend reasons that he deserves to work at the loop but his skills just get overlooked. Danny is determined not to spend the rest of his life crushing rocks, persuading Jacob to say no if his mother inquires about working at the quarry again. Jacob expects Danny to return the favor, so Danny responds that he will think of a way how. In their classroom, all the students are focused on answering their exams while Danny, in Jacob's body, seems to not know anything. This prompts Jacob to share his answers with Danny. Afterward, Jacob continues to work at the barn and then spots Danny hanging out with May. He follows them and upon seeing the two kiss, Jacob immediately feels betrayed. Enraged, he heads back to the barn and pushes the ladder aside. As people stare at him, Jacob just tells them he is not himself before walking away. Later, Jacob, still in Danny's body, goes to his original house where George opens the door after he knocks. Jacob accidentally calls him dad, but he quickly changes it and asks for Jacob, referring to Danny. Then, George says the boy is in his room and lets him inside the house. Feeling a bit awkward, Jacob heads to his room, and as he stands by the door, he hears loud rock music playing from the inside. When Jacob enters his room, Danny gets up and greets him. Jacob confronts Danny about May and tells him he wants to switch back. Danny calmly tells him that hanging out with May is his way of returning him the favor. Jacob still insists on switching back, but Danny, consumed by selfishness, refuses. He believes that being in Jacob's body offers him a brighter future than returning to his poor living conditions. Enraged about Danny's greediness, Jacob attacks Danny, and they start fighting. When George sees them fighting, he tells Danny, who's actually Jacob, to go home. Defeated, Jacob exits the room and goes into the woods walking past the two-legged robots until he finds the sea mine. Meanwhile, Danny is mindlessly staring at the sky in Jacob's room, unaware that Cole has been calling him. Cole asks him how to draw a car, but since he can't draw, he only tells the child that cars are difficult to sketch. Seconds later, George goes inside the room to inform him that Ed is on the phone, asking where his son is, but all he does is shrug. Once George leaves, Danny opens Jacob's sketchbook. He browses the pages and softly chuckles upon seeing the things that Jacob has sketched. Eventually, he comes across Jacob's sketch of May. The next day, Danny, still in Jacob's body, goes to school while Jacob is absent. Lauren then approaches him after class to ask if he has seen Danny, and when he asks why, Lauren replies that her dad has seen him at the barn, looking upset. But Danny, in Jacob's body, ends the conversation by saying that Danny must be fine and is just around there somewhere. Later that day, Danny meets up with May and gives her Jacob's sketch of her. Feeling guilty, Danny goes into the woods to look for Jacob. He then reaches the spot where the sea mine is, and after staring at it for seconds, he runs off asking for help. Afterward, Danny walks into the hospital hallway and enters a room where Jacob, in his body, is lying unconscious. He also finds his parents in the room, looking after the boy they believe is their son. Ed tries asking him what happened to his son, but as he struggles to answer, he only responds incoherently. Before leaving, he just expresses how he feels bad for everything that has happened. Upon exiting the room, he also gets hugged by Lauren, crying and worried about Danny's condition. Lauren has no idea that it is actually Jacob lying on the hospital bed. When Danny returns to the forest that evening, he sees that the sea mine is broken and some people are demolishing it for scrap metal. Now, the chance of him and Danny switching back has vanished. Feeling helpless, Danny runs back to his original house, and without keys, he enters through a window. Then, he goes to his room and plays his guitar absent-mindedly. Later on, he gets the terrarium of his tarantula, and as he goes out, he sees his little sister watching television in the living room. Danny puts down the terrarium and communicates with the girl through sign language, telling her that her big brother still exists. But his sister just stares at him, so he takes the terrarium and leaves. In Jacob's house, Danny eats dinner with Jacob's family. 
Suddenly, Loretta asks him about his plan after graduation. Danny answers that his grades are not great, but Jacob's mother cuts him off, saying that his grades are good. Of course, that's because Loretta thinks she's talking to her son. Upon realizing that, Danny quickly tells them he thinks about working at the Loop, which makes Jacob's parents happy. George also reminds him that he can still draw, but the boy refuses and says he no longer likes to draw, making Loretta laugh softly. Then, Loretta tells him he is making the right choice, and George points out that Russ will be very pleased. The three suddenly fall silent, and when Loretta asks why, Danny responds that he misses his friend. After dinner, Danny goes into Jacob's room, where he brings his pet tarantula. Struggling to sleep, he gets up and looks outside the window. Upon hearing a metallic creaking, he goes outside with a flashlight. As he points the flashlight in the direction of the creaking sound, he discovers it's coming from a two-legged robot. When Danny calls it Jacob, the robot stops moving, and after a few seconds, the robot looks down. Then, it starts walking away from Danny, leaving him alone in front of Jacob's house. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.